it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet the Winter Gems Wrap. This is a beautiful and super cozy wrap that you can make this winter. And it is, we've used some variegated yarn to give us this lovely color work without even making uh, any effort. And we're going to be using a larger hook, a K hook, so this is pretty quick to stitch up as well. Now, we're going to talk about the supplies in a minute, but the finished piece measures about 14 inches wide and it's about 80 inches long. So it's nice and large and substantial to wrap around yourself as well. I will be giving a stitch multiple later in the video if you'd like to make this into a scarf or you might like to make it into a blanket or make it just a really wide wrap as well. So we're going to do this every stitch of the way together and um, this is just a really gorgeous piece to have for the winter season. So let's get started. For this project you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, um, one that's large enough uh, to get some thicker yarn through as you can see here. We're going to be using a 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey in blue. I'll put the link down below with a coupon code if you'd like to get one for yourself. And we're going to be using this beautiful yarn here, extra special thanks to Hobie for sending it to me. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen me sharing little snippets of it here and there. Um, this is 870 yards of worsted weight yarn. So if you need to substitute worsted weight yarn is what we'll be using, 874 yards of that. I'm going to be using five balls of this yarn that you see here. This is the Wool Power Print made by Happy Sheep. Um, it's a like a jewel tone variegated yarn. It's really pretty. Um, I'll put the link down below for this yarn as well if you'd like to grab some for yourself. And this is color 112 and they also call it dusty blue, orange, curry, teal, and purple. So it just is lovely. It looks like very wintry and cozy. I just love it. It's just it's a lot of color, but it's not like screaming color. I just think it's really beautiful. Um, anyway, I'm going to use one, two, three, four, five balls of that for this project. Now, um, again, it comes in dye lots. Each ball of this is 174 yards, and it recommends between a US um, J or K hook for that, depending on kind of like the, the fabric you're trying to achieve. This is a four medium on the yarn weight scale. Um, and again, if you need to substitute 870 yards of worsted weight yarn. So let's get started. All right, I grabbed some yarn and my hook and we're ready to roll. So we're gonna do our starting chain first. Now, before I begin, um, our pattern has a multiple of four plus one. And let me just come way in so you can see what I'm doing here. So all that means, if you're not familiar with multiples, all that means is when you're doing your starting chain, just go four plus four plus four plus four plus four and so forth until it's as wide as you would like it to be and then just add one more chain onto that. So our multiple is four plus one. All this is uh, also found on the blog on the written pattern if you need to refer back to it later. We are gonna do a starting chain of 49. That's the width that I think is lovely for this. To begin, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop. Reach in with your hook, bring up a loop, and tighten. Again, our starting chain is 49. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 46, 47, 48, and 49. So here is the width um, that we'll have. Now, if you're not crazy about this or you wanna make it into a scarf or do something wider or a blanket or what have you, again, the multiple is four plus one. You can kind of tweak it at this point and then once you start going, you know, you're kind of committed to that, that width, okay? So let's begin row one. To begin, we're going to work three double crochets in the fifth chain from the hook. So the loop here does not count. We're going to go one, two, three, four, and five. So in this fifth chain from the hook, work three double crochets. To make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into that chain, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the last two loops. And let me just come in a little bit closer so you can see. And then we're gonna work two more double crochets into that same chain for a total of three. So that was one, and then this is two, 
and then three, just like that. Then what we're gonna do is skip three chains. One, two, three, and in the chain after that, we're going to work a single crochet into the next chain. So insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. Then what we're gonna do is chain three, one, two, three, and then we're going to work three double crochet in that same chain that we worked that single crochet. So you can kind of see that right there at the bottom. So work three double crochets into that same chain. One double crochet, two double crochet, and three double crochet, just like that. Then what we're gonna do is work three double crochet in the same chain where we work that single crochet. So one, two, and three. Just like that. Then we're going to skip three chains, one, two, three, and in the chain after that, work a single crochet, chain three. One, two, three, and three double crochets in that same chain where you just worked your single crochet. One, two, and three. And I just want to point out as a side note that my yarn colors are changing already and it looks so pretty. I love it. And we're getting ready to go to like this like gold color. Okay, skip three chains, one, two, three, and in the chain after that, work a single crochet. Just like that, chain three. One, two, three, and work three double crochets in that same chain. One, two, and three. Skip three chains, one, two, three, and the chain after that, work a single crochet. And then chain three, one, two, three, and then work three double crochet in that same chain. One double crochet, two double crochet, and three double crochet. Skip three chains, one, two, three, in the chain after that, work your single crochet, and then do the same thing, chain three. One, two, three, and work three double crochet in that same chain. One, two, and three. It's starting to look really pretty. The colors are just subtly changing. Skip three chains. One, two, three, in the chain after that, work a single crochet. Chain three, one, two, three, and three double crochet in the same chain. One, two, and three. Skip three chains, one, two, three, in the chain after that, work a single crochet. And then chain three, one, two, three, and three double crochet in the same chain. One double crochet, two double crochet, and three double crochet. And our color, once again, has become this lovely bronze color. Just love it. Okay, we're getting towards the end here already. Skip three chains. One, two, three. In the chain after that, work a single crochet. Then chain three. One, two, three and in the same chain work three double crochet. One double crochet, two double crochet, and three double crochet. All right, skip three chains. One, two, three, and the chain after that work a single crochet, and chain three. One, two, three, and in that same chain, three double crochet. One, two, three. Okay, we are at the end, and when you have four chains left here, what you're gonna do is skip three chains, and in that last chain, work a single crochet stitch to finish off the row, okay? So, we have these cute little uh, spikes, I guess, if you will, little clusters, whatever you want to call them, 
But if you did the same number of, of chains as me, let me just zoom out. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of them until we finish the row. So let's move on to row two. Now, this is a super easy pattern. Row two is the uh, row we'll be repeating for the entire rest of your shawl. So what we're going to do for row two, and it's um, less counting of chains, so um, it just kind of zips along. For row two, what we're going to do is chain four. One, two, three, and four, and we're going to turn our work. Okay, once you turn, what we're going to do is work three double crochets in the first chain of this chain four we just did, okay? So you'll sort of go down to the base here. That's the first chain, see at the bottom there? Not this single crochet from the previous row. That looks, actually, let me zoom way in. I'm showing you things that are really small. Uh, this, this, not in this single crochet here, but at the base of this, this first chain four, um, the first chain of the chain four that we did, okay? So work three double crochets in that first chain of the chain four. So one, two double crochet and three double crochet okay so that's a little different than how you kind of start rows normally but it'll make more sense in a second then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, see this double crochet these these three double crochets that we did and then we have this chain off to the side that makes a chain space, okay? So you can kind of see it on the side of each one here as you go across. We're gonna work into those spaces for the rest of this row. So what you'll wanna do is work your single crochet in that chain three space. So go right in there, work that single crochet. Then we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. And then we're gonna work three double crochet into that same space. So we don't need to count anything, we just need to work it into those chain three spaces. So one, two, and three double crochet. This is a pretty simple stitch with uh, simple um, basic stitches, if you will, double crochets and chains and single crochets, but it makes for a really interesting texture, okay? Now hop over here and go into that next, see that group of three double crochets from the previous row and you got your turning chain in that space, that chain three space, work a single crochet, then chain three, one, two, three, and then three double crochet all in that same space. One, two, and three. And I do think it's really fun, the yarn, the variegated yarn, if possible, if you have variegated yarn, um, try it with this stitch because it really shows off all these little blocks as you're working. Okay, hop over to that next chain three space and work your single crochet right into that chain three space and then chain three. One, two, three, and work three double crochet in that same chain three space. One, two, and three. Hop over to the next chain three space and work your single crochet right in there and chain three. One, two, three, and in the same space, work your three double crochet. One, two, and three. Hop over to the next chain three space and work a single crochet and chain three. One, two, three, and work three double crochet in that same chain three space. One, two, and whoops, I dropped a loop. Let's redo that last one. If you ever have a stitch that you don't love the way it looks, just uh, go back and redo it and you'll be glad that you did and, and it won't stick out to you if you leave it there. Work your last double crochet of that section and then we're gonna hop over to the next chain three space and work a single crochet right in there and chain three. One, two, three, and work three double crochet into that turning chain space. So that's one, two, and three. Just like that. And as you can see, it's looking super pretty. I just love it. Okay, go into the next chain three space and work a single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, and three double crochet into that same space. One, 
two, and three. Go over to the next space, work your single crochet, then chain three. One, two, three, and three double crochet in the same space. One, two, and three. Hop over to the next chain three space, work a single crochet, and chain three. One, two, three, and three double crochet in the same space. One, two, and three. And then we're nearing the end here. Work a single crochet in that chain three space, and chain three. One, two, three, and three double crochets into that space. Everything's in threes in this project. So three double crochet. And then to finish up row two, what you're going to do is locate that turning chain. And then here's that end one. In the topmost chain, that fourth chain up of that turning chain, work a single crochet into that right at the top there to finish off the row. And row two is complete. So let's look at our handiwork here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And you can see the colors are interacting really beautifully. And like I mentioned before, this is a simple stitch to do. And after uh, one or two uh, rows, you can kind of memorize it and zip right along. If you need to back up the video at any time, or um, YouTube has a slow motion feature, you can do watch it in slow motion if you want to. But keep going with row two over and over and over again until your piece is as long as you would like it to be. We're going to rejoin in just a minute and do a little finish work and look at our beautiful shawl all stitched up. Okay, just working that very last stitch. And then I'm going to connect these two here in that turning chain space with a single crochet. Same thing we've been doing the whole project. And I don't have quite enough yarn to begin a new row, so we are going to wrap it up here. I just wanted to show you how beautiful, now let me zoom out just a little bit so you can see how beautiful this color played out with this stitch. I got about a row with each color, give or take. Sometimes it transitioned in the middle of a row, but it just is gorgeous the way it displayed the stitches with the colors. So the last thing we need to do is just do a little bit of finish work, not a lot. So we're going to just cut the yarn, leaving a tail here and we're going to fasten off. So let me zoom back in, wrap the yarn around your hook and just pull it through that loop all the way. And then we're going to grab our tapestry needle and thread it. And when you have yarn that changes colors on its own like this, you'll want to stay, when you weave your ends in, you want to stay in the same color area. So my tail here is blue. I'm going to sort of keep it in this blue area. Okay, so we're just going to go in to these loops. Now our stitch is reversible that we did. So that's really nice for a wrap because you can just sort of throw it on and not really worry about which way it's facing. But when you're weaving in your ends, you'll want to make sure that you're staying sort of in the middle of those stitches and so you're not going on either side and just want to keep it a little nice and neater than normal just because it's, it is reversible. Okay, so I also like to come in the other direction with my tail just to help lock it into place. And this is very wooly, so it kind of has little um, like fibers that feel a little grippy when I'm weaving this in. So hopefully this will stay put. And I'm just gonna grab my scissors, give it just the tiniest little tug and snip and then it will kind of just disappear. Okay. So our wrap is complete. If you have any other tails that you come across, you'll want to also weave them in as well. So that is how you crochet the Winter Gems Wrap. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.